Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rohit Srinivasan, and I'll be taking you on a virtual walk through the Palikkane and Sholing Nalu marshland. Um, yeah. So the Palikkane and Sholing Nalu marshland is one of the fewest wetlands present um, in South India, and it uh, is in the center of the city where um, where uh, development is booming. Uh, it holds a rich diversity of life, both the marshlands. Okay, so I'll be taking you first through Palikkane, and then we'll go to Sholing Nalu. Um, yeah. So Palikkane marshland in 1972 was close to 13,500 acres, but at present it's less than 600 acres. This is because thousand uh, residential properties and government bodies such as the dump yard, the MRTS Perengudi, uh, the NIOT campus. Uh, have encroached um, into the Balikkane marshland and made it less than 600 acres, and out of which only 312 acres is part of the under the protect, protected under the forest department, and the rest is not yet protected. And the dump yard every year encroaches and uh, increases its uh, length every year. Um, yeah, so the Balikkane marshland um, at present holds close to 220 species of birds. It has a diverse, rich, large uh, diversity of life, and uh, so the, one of the main things you'll observe when you go to Palikkane marshland is the grasses and reeds. There are close to 114 species of plants, out of which 29 species of grasses and reeds. Now, these grasses and reeds play a major role for many birds and many birds for their survival, uh, breeding, nesting, um, camouflage, and even uh, feeding grounds. They Help they, they are feeding grounds. So this is the black-headed ibis. The two ibises which you will see um, in the Palikkane marshland and Sholing Nalu marshland is the black-headed ibis and the glossy ibis. So yeah, and these are some of the species that totally depend on the reeds and grasses. That is the black bittern. You usually see three kinds of bittern: the black bittern, yellow bittern, and cinnamon bittern. And then you have the white-breasted water hen. Um, yeah, white-breasted water hen. And then you'll see. It, Warblers like the Cramless Reed Warbler, and these birds camouflage really well, and it's very tough to. Uh, if you don't look carefully, you won't be able to see them. And then the ruddy-breasted crake, and you'll also see uh, the Balian's crake, another uh, um, beautiful bird to watch if you look carefully in these reeds. But one of the commonest species found in these reeds are the grey-headed swamp hen or the purple swamp hen, uh, and then you'll see the uh, Indian pond heron, which uh, yeah, which will be uh, staying still. Near uh, these kinds of reeds, uh, and getting camouflage in these reeds, uh, and then some of these snipes, like the greater painted snipe, is very very tough to notice, but are present in the Balikkane marshland. This is a female um, greater painted snipe, um, and it's yeah, and these are some of the species that totally depend on uh, these reeds for survival. And now let's go to some common species that one can see in the Balikkane marshland when they visit the Balikkane marshland. So this is the Indian pond heron in breeding uh, plumage. So the Indian pond heron, whenever you go to the Palikkane marshland, for sure you'll be able to see the Indian pond heron, and uh, everywhere throughout the Palikkane marshland, and even the grey-headed swamp hen. And if you look carefully in the reeds, you'll see small birds uh, such as the grey prinia and the plain prinia uh, flying and uh, yeah, flying from one reed to another reed. And uh, yeah, so those are and cattle egrets. Sometimes you'll be able to see little egrets, uh, intermediate egrets, and great egrets. Great egrets, but those egrets are uh, quite not that common compared to the cattle egret and little egrets. And cattle egrets and little egrets, you'll be seeing them all over the Palikkane marshland. This is the breeding plumage of the cattle egret. Um, yeah. So near the NIOT campus, the National Institute of Ocean Technology campus, which is uh, yeah near that campus, is where you find large trees and wooded trees where it's the roosting ground for large birds because throughout the Palikkane marshland there's only reeds and grasses no wooded plants so that's the only region which has wooded plants where it's uh, the roosting sites for large birds like the painted stock uh, the spot bill pelican and the um, purple heron the gray heron um, and sometimes the open bill stock too um, yeah and then what the, if you notice the Palikkane marshland, you'll see there's lots of grasses and reeds, but in between there's spaces where it's open spaces. And in these open spaces, if you look carefully, you'll see stints, the little stints. You'll also see uh, timinic stints sometimes. 
and then you'll see sandpapers you'll see the uh, marsh sandpaper the uh, common sandpaper green sandpaper and wood sandpaper and then you'll see the black wing stills in large in small groups but in large numbers um and then um, scattered across the um palikane marshland and then you'll see a uh, lapwing usually we see the uh, red water lapwing also known as the all kati kurvi in tamil but then in palikane marshland you can see another variety of lapwing the gray headed lapwing uh, in small groups near the dump yard side and uh, uh, along with the flamingos which is seen during the migratory season you'll see in between the flamingos you'll see this uh, up turned bill like a bird which is called a pied avocet a beautiful bird and and sometimes you'll see the black tail godwit also near the flamingos uh, usually in pairs usually in pairs so when there's this much diversity of uh, birds there's definitely going to be predators and raptors so when you when you're looking carefully on these birds suddenly you'll see instinctively these birds flying and if you look carefully um, you'll see that some it's it's flying and getting scared or something and you'll see this large bird chasing it and that large bird is nothing but the eurasian marsh harrier it's one of the most common raptors seen in these marshes and you can see it's hunting if you come early in the morning you'll definitely be able to see its hunting behavior usually uh, hunting in pairs it's a beautiful bird to watch but in the sholingal marshland you can see it very um you can observe it very uh, easily because in the palikane marshland there's reeds and grasses that uh, block your sight um yeah and then uh, during the migratory season um till now they have been coming and these are the greater flamingos which occupy one part of the um uh, one part of the palikane marshland it dominates one part of the palikane marshland and you can see it very closely and that's a beautiful sight to watch it's it comes in large numbers occupies one part of the uh, palikane marshland the southern block and um, yeah it's southern block yeah uh yeah waterfalls um, so comparing the sholing nalu marshland and the palikane marshland in palikane you can see waterfalls but you will see them scattered around uh, the palikane marshland but in sholing nalu marshland you see them in large numbers in large numbers and in uh, nearby so in the palikane marshland you will see them but very far away in the middle of the uh, marsh it's very far to observe and you'll see the little grebes uh, usually in pairs uh, then you'll see the spot bill uh, indian spot bill duck very common uh, very common waterfowl uh, seen in small groups and you'll see the fuller whistling duck which is also seen in small groups and then you'll see uh, the gargani which is seen in pairs or or small groups in small groups um, yeah and then um, sometimes you'll notice large birds flying constantly without even stopping for a while they fly constantly uh, and these are the white winged terns a uh, beautiful bird uh, which comes in large numbers and they go around without stopping at all they fly constantly and when there's so much diversity there should be so there's um, a lot of other wildlife found in uh, marshlands so along the edges of the marshland you see lots of weeds growing and the Calotropus gigantea is one of the commonest weeds uh, one can see, and that's the host plant for the plain tiger. So whenever you go bird watching, you'll notice the plain tigers all over flying, and along with the plain, uh, along with the, in the Calotropus gigantea when it's flowering, that time you'll see the, um, you yeah, you'll see the, um, yeah. So uh, the Calotropus gigantea, you see the carpenter bees. Yeah, you'll see the carpenter bees in la- they'll come in large numbers, carpenter bees and. that's uh, another insect uh, which which comes for the calotropus gigantea and then along with that you'll see the blister beetles every time when you go to the marshlands you'll see blister beetles another insect to watch and then along with the calotropus gigantea you'll see passiflora foetida which is another uh, plant uh, seen in the edges of the marshland and that is the um, that is the host plant for the tawny coaster butterfly so along with the plain tiger you'll also see tawny coaster is a record of close to 15 species of butterflies seen in palikare marshland and about 21 species of reptiles so indian rat snake i have seen once but then i'm not sure what variety of uh, reptiles are there but then there's 20 species of reptiles recorded in palikare marshland and seven species of amphibians recorded in palikare marshland so there's a large rich diversity uh, of wildlife in uh, these marshes uh, so one of the common things which one can see when they go to the palikane marshland is 
uh, if they go just before dusk, you would be able to see large groups of uh, spot bill pelicans sitting on these high electric wires. That's a um, uh, that's a, a beautiful sight to watch. Uh, you'll you'll see large numbers of them. And then if you go any time during the any time to the dump yard, most of the time to the dump yard, you'll see thirty plus black kites um, soaring on top of these dump yard garbage. And then so I've seen for two years, uh, but during the migratory season, uh, mostly you'll be able to see the beautiful murmuration behavior of rosy starlings. So they come in thousands and they come and fly and form different patterns, uh, forming different patterns and uh, without bumping into each other. You can see them just before uh, dusk. Uh, yeah, and that comes to the end of the Pallikane marshland. Uh, now we should go to the Sholingnanu marshland. So Sholingnanu marshland, um, if you notice Sholingnanu marshland, there isn't much reeds and grasses. Reeds and grasses start after a point of time, there's lots and lots of water and space. And that give, that is very ideal for waterfowls. So this is the Eurasian region, male and female. So waterfowls, there's a diverse variety of waterfowls and they come in large numbers. And you can see them very close by if you go to the Sholingnal marshland. So here are some of the common species of um, waterfowls you can see. So this is the Northern Shoveler because it's named after its shovel-like bill. And then Northern Pintail, um, northern pintail, very beautiful bird to observe when it goes uh, hunting, uh, feeding, fishing. And then a uh, spot bill duck, uh, which is also found um, in Palikane marshland and Shorinan marshland. These birds are also found in Palikane marshland, but can be easily seen in Shorinan marshland. And then a uh, lesser whistling duck. And then the gargany, which I showed, gargany's uh, little greeps um, and uh, Full of sizzling ducks, which I showed in Palikrai Marshland, is also seen in Shoming Nanu Marshland. And then some of the rare ducks seen um, in the Shoming Nanu Marshland is the knob bill duck, or also known as the comb duck. Only the male has the knob bill duck. So it's a very beautiful bird to watch and one, one of the largest uh, ducks seen. Um, yeah. And then reeds and grasses play a very important role in marshes, uh, in wetlands. And uh, so some of the birds, this is the glossy ibis. You can also see the black-headed ibis uh, in these grasslands. And you can also see the open bill stalks, which eats uh, mollusks and uh, snails. And some of the birds, some of the birds that totally depend on these uh, reeds and grasses are the um, yellow bittern. There's three bitterns: the cinnamon bittern, black bittern, and yellow bittern. And then you'll see the pheasant-tailed jasana. You can also see sometimes the bronze-winged jasana. Uh, which is seen in Sri Lanka marshland also. And then you see the watercock. This is the male watercock. And that's not often seen, but, but if you look carefully in the reeds, you'll be able to see these birds. And then during the breeding season, you'll see the common coot with its chicks. It's a beautiful sight to watch. Uh, common coot. And you can see them um, in Palikane and Sri Lanka uh, marshlands. Yeah. Um, in the Palikane marshland, if you observe, you will be able to see the spot bill pelican, but you won't be able to see them very close by. You won't be able to see their flight uh, landing, which is a beautiful sight, and um, also the uh, feeding behavior in very close uh, distance. But in the Shoningal marshland, you'll be able to see this. You'll be able to see them in very close distance, uh, feeding behavior um, and flight landing behavior, and it's an amazing sight to watch. Um, and these are one of the largest birds. And I'll be showing next uh, large birds that you can see. So, um, darter, also known as snake bird. And then you'll be able to see the um, gray heron and purple heron. Um, yeah, purple heron and gray heron. And then the great egret, you'll be able to see all four species of egrets uh, the gray egret, little egret, cattle egret, and intermediate egrets. And then the open bill stalk where grasslands are there, you'll be, able to, you'll be seeing them um, feeding on mollusks and snails. Uh, yeah. And then uh, cormorants, cormorants, uh, unique uh, feeding behavior where they go, yeah, feeding behavior. And you can also see them um, on empty branches, you'll see them uh, drying their wings. And uh, you'll see them in large numbers and very close by in the uh, Sholingnalu marshland. So, 
uh, in the Sholingnal marshland or the Perambakam marshland, you will be able to see a lot of raptors compared to the Pallikane marshland. In the Sholingnal marshland, if you go early in the morning, you'll be able to see the Eurasian marsh harriers, uh, unique hunting behavior, um, yeah, hunting behavior. And then if you look at the poles, the electric poles, you'll be able to see the um, electric poles is where one can see a lot of raptors. So the high voltage electric poles, you'll definitely, if you come early in the morning at six o'clock, you'll definitely be able to see the osprey. Uh, and then sometimes there have been sightings of three uh, falcons, the peregrine falcon, the um, common kestrel, and the red-headed falcon. So you'll be able to see that sometimes. And then if you look in the wires, you'll be, sometimes you'll be able to see the black shouldered kite. And there's not much of black kites observation here. Sometimes they do come. And some of the small birds, but very common birds are the white throated kingfisher. You can see it in any marshland. And um, yeah, white throated kingfisher. There are three species of kingfishers, which uh, one can see in these marshlands. The common kingfisher, white throated kingfisher, and the pipe kingfisher. The common kingfisher is said to be common, but it's not common. It's very uncommon. And uh, yeah, so these are four species of small birds that one can see um, in the Shoning Nalu marshland. So the pied kingfisher's hovering behavior, beautiful sight to watch. Um, and then where grasslands are starting, you'll see, uh, where grasses are starting, you'll see lots of paddy filled pipit, um, uh, paddy filled pipit, you'll see uh, zitting cysticola. And then, um, and then you'll see in the wires, you'll see small groups of barn swallow in small groups. Uh, yeah, you'll see small groups of barn swallow. And then wagtails, there are two species of wagtails very commonly seen um, in these marshlands, the white browed wagtail and sometimes you'll see the yellow wagtail. And in these, and in these grasses and reeds, um, uh, last year uh, they saw the palas grass bird, which is also a very rare bird, uh, which they cited. So these grasses and reeds play a major role for a variety of uh, uh, birds. Yeah, so that comes to the end of my presentation. Uh, and that's the great round. Yeah, uh, thank you. And I will.